up, Internet? We are back with my N64 multi-cart, flash cart, multi-cart, my bob. It's been a little while since we last did this, but last time we played a lot of Rocket Robot on wheels. Oh, I want to play more. Maybe I'll stream a full playthrough at some point. But now, now we get to do Rugrat Scavenger Hunt. This is definitely a game I remember. <laughs> I rented it once, and, uh, well, I rented it once, and it stuck with me. Not for the best reasons. Um, the best way I can describe this game is sort of like if you took Mario Party and you took out all the mini games and fun stuff and left basically just a bunch of uh, RNG nonsense where you have to find random objects in the background and hopefully stuff happens. <laughs> That's about the rules to this game, yep. Ugh, these 3D models are so off putting. Hey, look at Angelica being helpful. You know, that's the funny thing. When Rugrats was in development, one of the people who uh, worked on it, I, I believe it was Eileen Klasky, she hated Angelica as a character and didn't want her in there because she's a bully. And I have to admit, when I watched Rugrats as a kid, I basically absolutely hated any moment where she would be on screen. We'll use a large board, because why not? And yet, the reason why she was even in the show to begin with... I'll be Chucky because I kind of look like him. Uh, the only reason she was even in there was to create some sort of conflict. And and the funny thing is, like, she's the best character in the show, really. She, she's what makes the show remotely watchable. <laughs> They're replicas of ancient Aztec idols. They only cost three payments of nineteen ninety five each. Because, yep, just ancient Aztec idols. Sure, why not? Wow, these 3D models are so off-putting. <laughs> Reminds me of, like, any Simpsons game ever. It's like, they just don't look right. We have to find all the pieces of the statues hidden in random bits of environment. Oh, this game. I remember there being kind of a neat underwater level and a big level on like a cake. So the babies must work together to find the pieces of the broken statues. If the babies find all the statues before Angelica finds her, the babies win. So, yeah, she has to find her golden statue, we have to find the other statue pieces. I can't remember if that means we actually have to find more stuff. From what I remember, though, it's basically designed so that, like, Angelica's programmed to know exactly where she needs to go, or she has, like, ridiculous luck, and you just have to sort of wander around and hope. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're here now. And we lost some cookies. I'm gonna pretend I know what that means. Baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. Okay. So now they're searching a random piece of environment for something. All of this is randomized. There's no way to predict it, but the AI seems to actually know where stuff always is. And it's basically. Mario Party minus all the, you know, minigames, which are the only parts of Mario Party that are really fun. It's just take turns wandering around looking at stuff and hopefully you find stuff randomly. And then if you do it right enough times, you win. Oh, 
<laughs> that animation. <laughs> this looks so garbo. <laughs> okay, let's roll a spinner. Three. I guess we'll go this way. And go one more step and go here. Now we can search. And basically we can pick anything in this room. I did it! I found them! Awesome. And this is basically the entirety of the game. It goes on forever. <laughs> like it's only a dash button. The individual like rounds of this game take forever. Like, I remember these taking, like, an hour at least to clear. Like, Mario Party took a while too, but it broke up its gameplay pretty easily, whereas this doesn't, and this is kind of it. Oh. I wouldn't say this is the worst N64 game I've ever played. I mean, I've played Quest 64. But this is just nothing but a huge waste of time with no real payoff. And it's just roll the dice, search random things, hopefully you win. Oh. Let's do it again! Why does it have a monkey sound effect if it's cats? I remember this game being an unbearable and yup, yup it is. <laughs> I don't think any of the Rugrats games were particularly good. This is the only one I think I ever played though. That's a lot of cookies, kid. Alright. Let's roll again. One. Eh. How did you get here? Uh, and now I think we lose a turn because of that. Okay, well, while this is going on, I'm curious about something, so I'm going to see what this is worth on eBay right now. Out of curiosity, because we've got time to kill now. Rugrat Scavenger Hunt N64. Cheapest copy, $20. <laughs> I would prefer to keep the $20, thank you. Because this, uh... This ain't worth $20 to me. <laughs> this is worth, I think, someone would have to pay me. Pick a door! I don't see any doors. Every step you take, you get closer to, like, automatically falling asleep as well. Oh god, this this game is uh, this is rough. I found a statue piece. This is all it is. It's just this. Hooray, we got cookies. Goodbye. Oh, ho, ho. no more of that, please, ever. Oof. Okay. So we played that terrible game. Let's play another, hopefully less awful Rugrats game in Rugrats in Paris the Movie.
I think my brother saw this movie once, but I never did. So I can't really claim I know much about this. Uh, continue without saving, obviously, because I don't want this on my memory card ever. Thank you. Voice compression by Factor 5. They made those awesome Star Wars games that I wish we were playing because those were good. Alright. New game! Sure, let's play Adventure Mode. Look, it can't be as bad as the last one. It looks better. I have no idea what they're saying. Because compression! Okay, that's a little off-putting. But they look better than they did in the previous game. I'll give them that much. Whoa. Okay, that's... Do they blink in unison? <laughs> They do! Oh my... This is the second game this week I've, I've seen that has characters that, like, all blink in unison, and it's creepy as hell. <laughs> Ugh. These two look really messed up. Like, I can... I can kind of give the rest of them a pass, but the twins just look off-putting. <laughs> I'm gonna be Angelica because she's the best character. Without a doubt. Alright, so running around Reptar land, presumably. Because Godzilla XPs are definitely good for kids, but let's remove the anti-war, you know, anti-nuclear message of, of uh, Godzilla because, you know, that would actually be poignant. Ah. Uh. I watched Godzilla when I was a kid. Like, every weekend when I was in like grade three, I, I spent it with my uncle. And uh, we'd just rent Godzilla movies. And they were really good. And bear in mind, I was a kid. I was like maybe 10. Inventory's empty. Well, we can trade tickets for prizes, so we gotta go find the prize center, I guess. It's like, th those are very poignant, interesting, good movies. And it's not just because, you know, kaiju battle, although that's a big part of it, too. I think they could have actually kept the whole point of Godzilla in Reptar. I know my inventory is empty. I want to trade it, presumably, here. Okay, so... Okay, well... Oh, I see. I have to go in to trade, but we have an interactable outside that tells you how to trade. That's... Alright, fine. Okay. You need 16 gold tickets to trade for this price. We've got 6 red tickets. 60, 65. Isn't this just what a prize counter would be? You need an absurd number of tickets to get anything. And you're never going to get anything. I mean, presumably you have to, because, you know, that's how we're going to advance the game. Not that we're going to be playing for that long, but... I guess we'll keep collecting stuff until we have all the stuff we need to collect. Oh, this game has tank controls. <laughs> Alright. What do we have down here? We've got space baseball from the looks of it. Oh, there's a volcano. Okay, well now I need to go to the volcano because obviously I need to go to the volcano. Ugh. This controls so clumsily, and it desperately needs a jump button. I mean, it's it's more of a game than the previous thing, I'll give it that much. Although we've yet to actually get into any sort of actual game so far. I think we're just in a hub area. I don't think we can actually get to the volcano just yet. Presumably that's what'll be where you get at the end. And you rescue Princess Peach up top, and your your squirt gun makes a heroic sacrifice. Something, something, something. Bowser is definitely, definitely with Princess Peach to make a child. That was a good game. I liked that game. 
It's a bit jank, but I liked it all the same. Baseball toss. Okay. Presumably tossing baseballs. Hit as many targets as you can. You have unlimited baseballs. Hit 16 of 20 targets to get to the next round. Okay. Okay. So yeah. They have to be somewhat precise. They're, they don't have giant, really forgiving hitboxes. And the physics are a bit... Not great. And Angelica's head is huge, so you can't even see where you're aiming when they get right in front of you. We're okay. We're fine. We got this. I think I have a rapid button on my controller. I should just have that and, and just keep throwing balls so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's 10. I think we need 16, I think is what they said. There's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Perfect score. Only enough, though. It may hit 25 to 31 to get to round 3. Oh, we gotta deal with, like, three rounds of this nonsense. Really? This is already well worn out. It's welcome. Alright. Eh. Eh. What is with this aiming system? Like, it, it has like a weird physics arc to it that makes actually hitting anything really awkward. Also, slow down is not helping. There we go. We need 25 of the 31. That's a weirdly specific number. Well, we're not getting a perfect score this time. It's fine. Ooh! Ticket, 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 ticket. I want the ticket. I did not get the ticket. This is the worst game of baseball toss ever. Okay, I'm aiming directly at the thing and I'm overshooting. That's probably a sign that your your actual aiming system is not good. Seventeen. 1727. Has a 7 in it. That's all that matters. Close enough. So now I have to hit less than the last one, and there's less total targets? That seems like a strange pacing thing. Why make round two longer and harder than. Oh, we have limited baseballs this time. I see. I should have actually read that, shouldn't I? We don't actually even have enough. We have to hit 20, don't we? Unless there's like an extra ball pickup around here. I massively screwed this up. Okay. Reading, it's an important skill that apparently I don't have. Can I try that round specifically again, or are you going to make me do all three again? Oh, they boot you out if you don't do it. That's... Wow, that's not good. Okay, so that happened, I guess. This game is not enduring itself to me all that much right now. Let's see, let's go over here. Maybe we can find a better minigame that's not going to waste our time so much. Because I think three rounds of that's a bit exorbitant. Okay, so... Eh. Climb, 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 climb! And then get hit by the monorail. I'm pretty sure that happened in the movie that I've never seen. 
Can I go to the volcano? Golf park. I like some golfing. Let's go. Where's the part where I can actually play mini golfing? I will play that right now. Honestly, I, I just want to go back and play Mario golfing. Okay, so we got another jigsaw piece thing here, but... Okay, well, presumably we have to go in here, I guess. Except we can't. I don't have anything in the inventory, so don't tell me to access it. Oh! I don't want to go to the monorail. I want to play mini golfing. Okay. This looks like where we need to go. I hope. Okay. So let's get some mini golfing in. Okay. I don't know what I'm looking at here or what I'm aiming at or even how aim is determined, but we have swing power. Full power! Okay. Oh, there's the hole, I see. So you just gotta roll into the ball, and then then it'll just go. Okay. I'm gonna assume this is aiming right. Yep. This is mini golf with me, all right. It's kind of weird they don't at least set you in the right direction when you go. So they just gonna pick a random direction and you just sort of go. Neato! We got a red ticket. Awesome. This could almost be playable, sorta. As as a game if it was made competently. Okay, so I'm betting if I... Full power, because that's the only amount of power that matters in mini golf, obviously. Okay. So let's try about... There. Uh, close. Like, I think this game in its entirety is basically just a minigame compilation. But this is almost kind of playable. That last thing was awful. Like, if they tweak the mechanics here. They could almost make this just its own standalone game, I think. I mean, they'd have to fix the aiming system and make it a lot clearer as to what you were doing, but there's something here that's actually kind of playable. Let's, let's take one more go at it. Okay, so we're in Paris, in Paris. Okie doke. thinking we want to kind of bank it off this wall so full power again not really sure what my aim actually is that was not what I really wanted to do but that kind of worked well enough oh, let's just back up and rotate around okay so 
thinking right about there is about where we want to go. Full power! Alright, not bad. Not bad. Not gonna feel bad about that shot. This looks like a pretty standard just lean into the angle as hard as you can and just wail on the ball sort of situation. Oh no, physics. It's a little bit of a rollback. Okay. Oh, well, there's a little dip you can fall into. Don't fall into the dip. No! Don't fall in the dip! That was a terrible shot. Just gonna have to hike the ball into this corner, I think. Yep, yep, yep. That's okay. That's not bad. Alright, let's sink it. There we go. Well, we tried. I will say that mini golf was kinda, sorta, not the worst thing ever, but, you know, it, the rest of it was pretty awful. All right, third game of the evening, we are going to Rush to Extreme Racing USA, which is a sequel to, I believe, San Francisco Rush. I'm not familiar with this one. It's very loud, though. I'm gonna have to turn down the volume just a scoosh. Okay, that's cool. So I think we're driving a giant uh, tire tread right now, which is kind of stylish. Okay. Okay. So far, I'm impressed, Rush, and we haven't gotten past the title screen yet. You've got good music, although it's a little loud. You've got some style. Let's do one race. Just play. Where do we want to race? Ooh, New York looks cool. Wait, what? We, we somehow skipped over Hawaii. That looks like a boring course. New York Uptown. Alcatraz. Los Angeles. Seattle. Halfpipe. Crash. Okay, we're definitely gonna have to play this course. Uh, Las Vegas again. Let's start with Las Vegas and see what happens. Mobster car, sedan, bandit, coupe, exotic, van, sportster, subcompact, concept, hatchback, cruiser, there's a lot of cars here, 4x4, four four. no Torinos, just opportunity, I guess we'll go with the concept, although yellow is not a particularly great color, alright, rush! Is there a first person mode? What? Okay. See, up does that, I guess. Okay, there we go. There's first person driving, which feels a lot better. This doesn't look too bad. Oh, they're over in the next lane. Interesting. Okay, so we got some bonus time. All right, I'm, I'm kind of digging this, you know? I will say I'm not super familiar with the Rush games. I wanted to get that Future Rush game on, on the N64, but I've never actually played it. But I thought that one game looked particularly interesting to me. And I will say, based on this, I, I kind of want to get this, too. This is actually a pretty decent racing game. So far, anyway. Based on, like, the two minutes we've played. Whoa. The car really tries to overcorrect itself. Like, here, let's let's pop back in the. Like you can see, it's it's auto straightening itself out, which is a little weird. Cause I'm not telling it to do that. It's it's just whoa. Okay. 
you can really mess up your car. That's interesting. Okay, I think I like this camera the best. I, I normally like, like, first-person cameraing, but I think right now we kind of need this sort of thing. Wow, I have completely destroyed this car. It's a good thing it's not like a prototype, you know, concept car or anything. It's, it's definitely going to be cheap and easy to uh, repair. I definitely can afford this. That wasn't me, that was the other car. Whoa, whoa! I have to try a different car. <laughs> and not just because I smashed this one up, I, I think this one is a little bit slippy. I do kind of appreciate that it does seem to have like a, a nice solid checkpointing system, good times. We're on lap two it looks like. Though I don't see a lap counter anywhere. I don't think. I see a number two above the little mini-map. But I'm pretty... Yeah, we've been here before. So I guess we just are straight up on lap two. Still, this runs really, really well. I'm I'm pretty impressed with this. You know, if I were to create a list of, you know, racing games I've played on this multi-card so far, I'd like to get, you know... I think Arrow Gauge would be, like, top of the list, and... I, I think there might be some room for, like, Cruisin' Exotica, even though I don't have the biggest love for Cruisin'. But I think this would be a, a good one to add to that list. This one's not bad. I, I have to say, it's it's actually kind of right proper. Shortcuts, sort of. Let's go left, then right. Well, this one's kind of nice. I kind of like it. it. It feels good. Like, I messed up my car, and I think that might be affecting steering a little. In its entirety. But. Whoa! Yeah, the steering is completely different now. But it is a bit of a slidey car. I think I might have to try a different car for the next race. Still. Still. I think this one's actually not too bad. I, I could see I'm trying to get a copy of this for myself. Maybe, maybe try and, like, actually practice to get good at it, but, you know, this, this is actually not bad. Alright. Okay, well, we still have 63. This is the final lap. I see, so the little flag there where there used to be a number two, that is the lap counter. That is small and unclear. That's information that should be blown up. But either way... See if we can get faster than fifth. Faster than fourth. Let's see if we can do it. I gotta say, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised how how fluid this game seems to be in, in terms of its frame rate. Because I know the N64 tends to struggle a lot with like faster paced games. This actually seems to be doing relatively well. I can do without the screaming in the background though. But maybe that's just indicative of how bad I'm driving. In which case, fair enough. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm not so sure about the whole drifting thing with this. It's like I tried pressing B, that didn't seem to give me any sort of drift. It, it might be tied to the Z buttons, but Z doesn't seem to be giving me all that much responsiveness either. Could just be a, a matter of um, feathering the gas instead. Come on, I'd like to at least do better than fifth. Well, that's a hard turn. We didn't crash there this time. We did not do better than fifth. I'm pretty sure this is about where this is going to end. Got one more checkpoint. Can we gain four? Spots, I sincerely doubt it. All of a sudden, I'm reminded of Inertial Drift. It's a really good racing game I reviewed earlier this year. It has nothing to do with this game, other than it's a racing game and there are cars, but, you know, it was a fun game. 
Alright, fourth place. Not the best showing, but to be fair, this is my first time playing. What's your name? Let's try the next one. So, one race. Just play. So, we did Las Vegas. Let's do New York Downtown. This one looks pretty good. Oh, we can actually change the colors? Nice. Okay, we need a car that has some control, so Sportster might be the car for us. I'm not driving a van out of principle. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking we try the Sportster. Let's change some colors around. Let's see what we got. Uh, ooh, I like that, okay. Let's see what we got with this. Then, obviously, paint that red, now we got it my colors. You can change the rims and stuff. And the horn. The engine type. Torque. I assume this actually has some, like, level of how it affects your... This is ridiculously in-depth. I'm thoroughly impressed. Alright. I'm reminded of... What is it? Level... 3, I believe, of Daytona USA starting out on a bridge like this. I think that was level 3. Okay. It's foggy. I wonder if that's... This game... Uh, th this car has a lot of, like... Autocorrect as well. Whoa! Someone's having a lot of control though. It's fishtailing all over the place. Whoa! That car almost spawned inside me. Alright. Ha! Take that speed sign. I go how fast I want. Which is why I'm not allowed to drive on public roads anymore. So, oh, that's going to be a hard turn. Yeah, so, B does seem to apply brakes, but it doesn't seem to actually, like, affect drifting in any controllable way. Unless you really have to, like, trigger it early or something. No, that actually takes away control. Whoa, okay. Control in this game is really quite weird kind of digging it though like I the controls are a bit not great but it's still a relatively competent racing game like again I, I like the sense of speed and the, the solid frame rate this thing has that's what's selling me on it more than anything right now Let's see if we can cleanly pass you and we did about cleanly passing this guy and not running into that wall. Whoa! I'll run into that wall, though. I could probably go down there. Maybe that's a shortcut. Maybe I'm an idiot for following these people. I just... I do not get, like, the cornering mechanics. It's a little hard to tell what some of this stuff is. Like, some of this stuff looks like walls when it's actually, like, just a flat ground with, like, a different texture on it. There looks like a shortcut. Also, Mountain Dew cameo, because shameless advertising. Whoa! Oh, yeah, that's a good turn. I'm getting slightly less awful at this. Only slightly, though. Also, I will not stop stop sign. You stop. You stop being a sign the moment I run over you. Thank you for the speed boost, person from behind. Rude, but also thank you. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, like right before I started playing this, I, I was actually playing a lot of Trek Mania. <laughs> and I'm, I'm kind of having to, in my head, tell myself consistently this is not going to control the way that you think it's about to. <laughs> uh. Alright. So that isn't a wall. It's a drop though. This is a neat little area. And a sc 
Kirk Bayou. I think the wall's coming right up here. Yup, that's a wall. That doesn't look like a wall to me, but it is. Whoa! Okay, yeah, I don't like that the actual, like, counter of... Whoa! I guess we're down here now. Uh... Where are we going? I don't know. I guess this way. Take that, rats. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go! Also, I just got hit by a train. And that's how you know this is a good racing game. When you can get hit by a train, that's a sign you've got a good racing game. Alright. Yeah, this is, uh, this isn't bad. I, I don't like the steering. The steering feels a little bit... Like, it doesn't want to give you all the control it could. Like, it feels like very hands-off sort of stuff. It could just be that I... Whoa! It could just be that I, I just don't have, like, the drifting or, or like, hard-turning mechanics. But to me, it does feel like the, the turning is very, very clunky and not half as responsive as I'd like it to be. But I am having fun with this. This isn't a bad little N64 racer. If it was affordable, I could see myself trying to get a copy. We are currently fourth. Let's see if we can get third. It's going to be all dependent on this. Whoop! I think I just cost myself third. Yeah, I did. Well, that sucks. Still, fourth place. Better than dead last. Okay. Now I want to see what that one really weird looking thing was. So let's just play. Where is it? Not that one. This one. What's this all about? Is this just a, a, a mess about test track that they decided to leave in? So I'm thinking that's what it is because it looks like a, a testing area for just random stuff. Sort of like how, like, wet, dry world in Mario 64 is just, like, nonsensical stuff all over the place. It feels like a testing area. And this seems very much the same. Can I drive up that? Let's find out. Yep, yep, I can. Meow. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> What exactly is this thing? Is it gonna instant kill me? I don't know if it does or not, but... Woo! Boom. <laughs> this is pretty fun. I think this could probably sell the game on its own. You know, it'll be fun for an hour or two just messing around with this. Can I land it? Oh! Oh, nope. Alright. The respawning is a little disorienting, though, I'll say that much. Let's see how far we can make it off this jump. Full speed! I reminded a lot of... of, um... the space levels in Blast 4, where you could just fling yourself super high into the air and it would really accomplish nothing but you could do it. And that's pretty great, you know? It's great when that's on there. Is there something in the air over there? Yeah, I think I'm seeing like little floaty dealies. Ah. Yeah, I think there's like little floaty things in the air. Like little coins or something to collect. Maybe if you get them, you unlock a secret extra course or like an extra car or something. Right there to the right. There's like a, a silver or something. It looks like to get it, you have to go up that jump. So let's see if we can get over there. And give it a try. 
Whoa, that's fine. This is fine. This is good. I will say this is infinitely better than those Rugrats games. Okay, so let's. I think we're about as aimed on this as we possibly can be. Whoa, or not. That's fine. I want to see if I can at least try to get that coin. Let's see what that's all about. Alright. So jump. Hard turn. Line ourselves up. Right out here. And just go for it. Nope, 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 nope. Hey, we landed it, though. It looks like that coin is just off-center of, like, the edge of the ramp. This is how it's, how it's kind of feeling a little bit. Whoa! What? <laughs> this game is worth it just for that. That was awesome. Alright. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer and take a look at that coin thing. So we're just gonna go straight and hopefully. They're cans of Mountain Dew. Okay, game. You lose all the points in the world for that. <laughs> you had points, you lost them. You should feel bad about that. Go support my Patreon. There, that's advertising. Boom. And I didn't have to shill an extra product. Okay, so that was Rush 2. It was good up until the blatant advertising. Next is Scars. Now, I rented this once. It is aggressively average, from what I remember. We'll take a look at it. I don't think Scars is actually an acronym of anything, but it is a racing game. And, uh... The whole thing about Scars is it's part of the Scars universe, of which there is, as far as I can tell one game uh, continue without saving because I'm not doing that basically scars are cars that mix cars with animals basically so we got a lion car an elephant car a rhino car a shark car a praying mantis car uh, then there's a scorpion a snake some kind of frilled lizard and I guess a cheetah maybe I just remember this game being really not very good. I don't wish to use the Rumble Pack. Let's go. Let's see if this game is better than I remember it being. Okay, so we got a boomerang. How do I use said boomerang? I think I did. out. It doesn't really have a, a sense of speed to it. You know? It actually feels very, very slow. For a racing game. And bear in mind, this is a system that did get a wipeout game on it. So this, this ostensibly was supposed to be wipeout, sort of. And bear in mind, the N64 was a, a console that had a lot of, like, subpar racing games on it. This one just feels like another one of them. Like, it looks kind of good. I'll, I'll give it that. It doesn't really have any sort of sense of speed, though. Okay, so there's a jump button. And it seems like Zed is just some sort of attack button, I guess. And the play hot potato with the floating skull thing button, that's what it also does. I think I have a shield. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this feels rather unspectacular. Okay, let's 
get rid of that. I mean, this is the first track, mind you, but it doesn't feel all that particularly interesting. Like, I'm not seeing any, like, secrets or, or like, collectibles or anything that would make, like, exploring it worth anything. Not like, you know, Beetle Adventure Racing had a bunch of secrets and stuff. And by collecting them all, you got, like, secret race cars and stuff. That was a really good racing game, though. Which was weird, because it was a corporate tie-in game. But it was weirdly solid for that sort of thing. Whereas this feels like it's functional, but not much else. And lots and lots of stock sound effects. What? You can't do that. Oh, you. I don't like you, Rhino Car. Okay, well, it. It seems like the skull is basically play hot potato and you just automatically activate it for whoever's closest to you. I think? So as long as you have it, you can hold it and, like, wear down the timer, I guess. So that you hit the next car. You could do that. Ow. Take that, Rhino car. Oh, that's bad. Oh, yeah, sure. They remember to jump. Whereas I completely screw up right at the end. Classic me. Oh, well, we came in second anyway. That doesn't even look like a line. It looks like some kind of bug. Continue. All right, let's do another race. I'm thinking about giving up, Rhino Car. All right, let's go. I wouldn't say this is a bad game, but I don't think it would ever be a game I would actively try and, like, get a copy of. Like, if I got a copy of it for free, I wouldn't be complaining and I'd do something with it, but... It's definitely not the kind of thing I would, like, actively pursue myself, you know? This is, like, a thing that I get in a bundle, so I guess I'll do something with it, sort of. Like, the idea of making, like, animal-themed, like, mutant super metallic cars or something. I mean, first of all, that's Transformers, but second of all, that sounds like something Hot Wheels has done and would be awesome, but... Here... I don't know, I'm, I'm not feeling this. Can I even go in the lava? I guess I can, okay. Ow. I'm not sure about this one, honestly. Like, this is, uh... I've played some not fantastic racing games in my life, and this one feels like another one of those. Like, the idea kind of has merit, but that's about where any sort of positivities with it kind of stop. Oh, you can charge the gun. Okay, so where's someone I can hit with this? So I have the gun. I'd like to hit them with it now. Whoa, okay. There's a route up there, but I don't know how to get there. We're in seconds. So there's someone I can shoot with this. I mean, ostensibly. There should be anyway. But it looks like they're super far ahead. I'm not even seeing them. Okay. I can't pass this on because I'm nowhere near the next person. That's, um... weird. So, the, the 
The hot potato touch of death thing only works if you're within a certain range of someone. That's very specific. Final lap! Oh, I think I see the guy in, in front of us now. Or I did for a moment. Turning, 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 not very well. Whoa, okay. Okay. But, yeah, this is, uh... Kind of just an underwhelming racing game, really. I'd rather get the last game over this. Although I will say the environments are a little more interesting. It feels, I don't know, at the same time, paradoxically, a lot more boring. Like, it just feels like it's doing a lot less of, of value to make it a good game. It's more interesting, but it's less quality, if that makes sense. All right, we'll do one more race. Honestly, this just makes me want to go play all the other racing games on this system. It's a shame, too, because I remember seeing this when I was a kid. And the only place in town that had this was like a Rogers video that was super far out of the way. So I, I only think I ever got to rent, like, one or two games there. And this was one I actively wanted to get. Just because it looked so interesting, and I played it, and it was massively disappointing. <laughs> You've already been here. Why are you making me erase the same thing again, game? Okay, so you can charge your weapons, but I'm not really how helpful any of that actually is. It doesn't seem like charging it actually makes them more effective. Or like it does any extra damage to your enemy. Ow. Like, I, I put up that, like, barrier thing, but it didn't seem to, like, get any bigger because I, like, charged it or anything. It just feels like, you know, you can do it because we need to add some extra mechanic, but it doesn't actually seem to do anything. It's very weird. Alright, just gonna avoid that. Turn it over here. Lighting is kind of nice. But I would say this game is at best like style over substance, but at the same time, that implies that it has a, a fair bit of style, which honestly, I would argue it doesn't. If it doesn't have style, and it is effectively style over substance, what does this game have? And the answer is not really much. It has maybe an interesting core concept, and that's kind of it. that, thank you. Alright, alright. Come on. Well, I wasted that. And caused that. Let's not run into that. That killed all my momentum. Alright, looks like my opponent's like right next to me. That's not good. Also, there's points, but points don't seem to indicate anything. It's not like if you have X number of points, you're faster. If you have X number of points, your your weapons do more. I think it's just, here's some points, because arcade games do points, so have some. Gonna grab that shield, and then not actually get them. What happened there? I almost jumped that fence. I'm convinced you probably could. Whoa. Okay. 
Okay, well, that's terrain screwing me over. It's fine. It's fine. This is fine. You can drop stuff, like, directly behind you. That's interesting. Like, it defaults to going straight ahead, but you do actually have, like, some control over it. Oh, that's no fair. <sighs> Alright, well that was subpar. Let's see what the next game holds for us. Tonight. Next is San Francisco Rush Extreme Racing. This is probably going to be a little bit like Rush 2. Because I'm pretty sure it's the thing that came before Rush 2. What was it being Rush 1? Alright, one race. Just play. Let's see, what do we got? Any interesting tracks? Is there a crazy stunt course thing that's awesome? Nope, doesn't look like it. In fact, there's only four courses, which actually makes us pretty bland. It's dangerous. Okay, this menu's obnoxious and loud, and I hate everything about it. It's dangerous. Everything about this menu is annoying. Okay, so it's A to accelerate. That's fine. Also, they're advertising Mace the Dark Age, which isn't a great sign, because that was not a fantastic game by any means. But, let's see what we can do about this. Some bonus time. Whoa, okay. Has that same sort of weird autocorrect the, the uh, previous game had as well. But I mean, it was a sequel to this, so that makes sense. A reflective texture change while in that, that uh, tunnel was an interesting touch. I'm just gonna cut over that. That's fine. Whoa, okay. Yep, that's fine. Nice paint job. Ow. Ow. It's fine. It's fine. This does actually seem to affect my steering a little bit. That's pretty cool. I gotta say, these rush games kind of interest me. If I could get them at a decent price, I could see myself grabbing them. I'm also just gonna try and shunt my opponent, because why not? No one said I had to drive clean. Which is great, because my car is completely messed up at this point, so I think that's out the window. Alright. I mean, so far, I would say this is, uh, decent. Whoa! No explosions, though. You know, the other game had explosions. This one just has crunchy sound effects. Kind of missed the explosions. Car damage is quite impressive, though. Uh, yes, this is San Francisco Rush. We played with Rush 2 a little bit earlier. I'm kind of impressed with these games. Although, in between the two, we played Scars, and that game is terrible. Although, I, I'm really excited for the future Rush game, which is the next one on the cart. I like to do two episodes in a row, we'll probably do that tonight as well. I wanted to play, well, I wanted to play the future one anyway, but yeah, I never had a chance to play the Rush games. Which is a shame, because they seem pretty solid. Whoa. And you know, since the N64 was a console that had so many racing games on it, you know, it's it's a shame the racing games I did play when I missed out on these, because these Rush games actually seem pretty good. I could see myself trying to get these if they were cheap. Yeah, the, the steering is really the biggest issue. It, it feels very, very clumsy. And there's like a weird auto-correcting. But I will say I am kind of impressed with these games. Oh, okay. It's 
It's kind of a shame, though. The other Rush game we played before this had this awesome, like... I, I swear it was like a dev tour room, but it was like this cool stunt course. This one doesn't seem to have anything like that. It's just like four courses, which is a little bland and boring, whereas the other one was just awesome. Yes, uh, everything on my cart is alphabetized. We played Beetle Adventure probably a year ago. That game is awesome. We also played HSV Adventure recently, I believe, as well, which is the weird Australian version of Beetle that is identical, but has a completely different car license. It removes the Beatles from Beetle Adventure, which is... I changed the color by up and down. Okay. Cool. I will say that the menus are obnoxious in this game. But I will say Beetle Adventure Racing is probably, like, the best non-Diddy Kong Racing racing game on the N64. That game is quite good. Oh, yeah, I cannot figure out, like, the hard steering here. Like, it feels like there's supposed to be a drift, but it just doesn't want to go. Still, I, I think the worst car game we've played on here would either be that, um, what was it? Uh, Lamborghini Automobili, or um, maybe, maybe the, uh, what was that other really abysmal racing game? Oh, uh, I'm blanking on its name now, too. Carmageddon, that was, that was a bad one, too. Yeah, it feels like there's supposed to be a drift, but I can't figure it out. It doesn't seem to be, like, the B button. So that just slows me down. I guess we're going this way now. Okay. I guess time to go on an adventure. Woo! Whoa! Whoa! Yep, we're fine. We're fine. We're good. I have no idea how to drift in this game, and that seems like a problem! I will say the destruction in this game seems a little bit lacking compared to the the sequel. They, they really upped the destruction. Oh, I think I, I, I think I might have a, a little bit of an edge on that drift. Hold on. No, I don't. I was just thinking, you know, maybe it's a feather the gas sort of situation. It doesn't seem to have to do with the brake at all. Uh, well, it's not R, and L seems to just... Little. That's disorienting. So that's L. And R doesn't seem to be doing anything. Z doesn't seem to be doing anything either. So who knows? But I will say so far, this seems like a pretty fun game. Yeah, I, I saw that 70s. Like, can I go under that? It looks like I can. I think I'm going to have to try and go for it next time I'm over there. Oh. Okay. I do appreciate that this is a game that does seem to have shortcuts and like secret passages and stuff. I, I love that in racing games. Makes them far more interesting. Because then, I mean, first of all, there's all sorts of secrets and stuff for exploration, and I love exploration, but second of all, it means you can sort of speculate on what the best potential route for anything is. And that's always fun. Whoa! Whoa! Uh-oh. That is so disorienting. Yeah, it does seem like it has a few that are pretty well hidden. Okay, so we're going under here this time. Woo! Crunch. No, don't. I want to go back up there. I don't care if I lose this race. I don't care if it's the wrong way. I want to see what was up there. This is the only thing in the world that matters to me right now. Ugh. I don't have the height or the speed. Crunch. 
That seagull was laughing at me. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I am liking these rush games. We're not gonna make that. Let's give it another go and pick another level. This one looks big. Go! Alright. Ooh! Ah! Yeah, if you screw up the, the shortcuts, it just sort of plops you pretty generously up to the next checkpoint. I... I can see being annoyed by that, too. I, like, I'm kind of annoyed about that. Like, I, I wanted to see that shortcut. I was up there. I earned that shortcut. Nope, I don't get to see what it is. That's the worst. Still, this game is infinitely better than Scars. There's a sense of speed. And, like, stuff's going on. I'm gonna go up the tower. I don't think I can. Oh! Nope, but there's something there. I will say this would be a lot easier if I could figure out the drifting mechanics, but I have not figured that out yet. Okay. Keep my eyes out for shortcutty bits. Yeah. Yep, nope, that's not a drift. It doesn't seem to have to do with the directional pad at all. It could be because I've, I've grabbed an automatic car for some reason. Maybe they're just awkward to drive. But I've never enjoyed having to, like, swap gears in, in any racing game ever. That requires far more concentration than I, I want or am capable of. Trying not to do that, but we did. Yeah, I cannot for the life of me figure out the whole drifting nonsense here. Woo! Oh well. Like I would say thus far, if you're gonna play a, a rush game, the sequel's better in every single way. But they're both pretty fun. There are significantly worse racing games we've played on here. And while I don't think it would beat out Arrow Gauge or, or like that, that uh, snowboarding game we saw way back when, you know, I, I could see putting this on a list of games I wouldn't mind grabbing for the system. Whoa! Okay. Also, that Power Rangers game. That game was weirdly legit. It should not have been as good as it was. Okay. Whoa, let's not crash this time. All right, there we go, there we go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hide, hide your shortcuts, like, in places to reward things that pr probably should be punished so that you get more exploration stuff. I get it. Make them, like, secret shortcuts. I, I dig that sort of stuff. Gives your tracks a lot more personality, I'll tell you that much. They're not just point A to point B sprints anymore, suddenly it's, it's about exploration. And because you're on a timer, you have, really have to figure out when to choose your moments to do that. Because you can't waste too much time trying to do that. I'm curious about something, so we're gonna probably lose this intentionally, but I want to see something. I feel like there's something up here. It's fine, we didn't explode. It's fine. It's fine, we didn't explode there. Oh, okay, we exploded now. Well, that sucks. 
Oh, that's interesting. There's like this huge half pipe area just in the middle of the track. Neat. Alright. I don't understand how to get around that turn. Alright, that's fine. That's okay. That almost worked like a drift, unintentionally. Okay, so we're in dead last right now. It's hard to see where I am actually on the map. Look! I wonder if we can go up here. Let's do it. We're gonna be pioneers going super far off the track. Last time we did this, we got hit by a train. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty great. <laughs> this is a neat little game. I thought I saw an alley there, but I did not. I mean, I think I get what you're saying about like a, a white dot with like a black dot in it being where you are on the map, but seriously, that is hard to see. And everything else looks identical. Like if they made each of the blips correspond to the colors or something, I think that'd be a lot more sensible. Okay, so let's wrap this up for the YouTube video. Based on these past five games, would I recommend this? Well, Rugrats Scavenger Hunt is basically if you took Mario Party and took out all the fun. So, no. Rugrats in Paris, I mean, half the mini games we played on this were awful. The other half were kind of, sort of, almost not the worst thing ever. But, no. Rush 2 was actually pretty decent. Uh, Scars was a total waste of time. And Rush 1, that was okay. Based on these past five games, would I recommend it? Eh, not really. Rush 2 is kind of good. And, and you don't need Rush 1 if you got Rush 2 anyway. But the rest are a total wipe. Uh, yes, having like a face like Mario Kart does would, would be significantly easier. Anything to identify the different cars on the map so you can figure out what you are. But still, I would say Rush 2, okay, the rest of it, a total wipe. And uh, next time, we're going to take a look at Rush 2049. This was a game I really wanted to play, so I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, if you're watching the YouTube videos, this will be it for this week. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, follow the stream to know we go live, because we try and stream as often as possible. Check out and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see everything else I do, and check out and support my Patreon to help support everything I do, so that I can continue to do stuff like play all these weird games, and also the terrible, terrible, terrible Rugrats games, because oh my god, those are bad. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, Internet.